Okay, so this is World's Scariest Prisons, um, Fleet Prison. Imagine walking a London street in the late 18th century. A massive stone building crowds the sidewalk. From inside, sobbing voices cry out, alms, alms. Hands reach from barred windows, plucking at your coat. Alarmed, you fumble in your pocket for a few coins to deposit into a little box fixed to the front of a cell. This is Fleet Prison, which operated near the Fleet River from 1197 until it was closed by an act of parliament in 1842 during Queen Victoria's reign. People who owed financial debts were the first prisoners in Fleet, but before long, prisoners of all kinds were sent there. Behind the Bars, also known as Fleet Debtors Prison, located in London, England by the Fleet River, operational 1197 to 1842, Number of prisoners, up to 300 debtors and their families were imprisoned at a time. Notable inmates were John Doan, poet, Ben Johnson, playwright, Sir Walter Raleigh, explorer, writer, Sir Thomas Lodge, Lord's, Lord Mayor of London, and Jor Jorgen Johnson, Danish adventurer. I know I pronounced his name wrong, and I apologize. <laughs> Who did time? The population expanded to include protesters, rebels, and political and religious prisoners. The poet John Doan was the philosopher and religious rebel William Penn, later the founder of the colonial province of Pennsylvania, are just two of many historical and literary figures who did time at Fleet. Conditions at Fleet Prison were actually somewhat better than at other prisons of this era, at least if you had enough money. Wealthy debtors lived in one side of the prison where they had their own rooms and furniture and servants to wait on them. Prisoners could pay the warden for better food and for outings, and if a prisoner had enough money, he or she could even pay to live outside the prison walls. Life at Fleet was very different if you were poor. As in many debtors' prisons, poor prisoners were crowded together, often chained, and left covered in filth. There are records of prisoners being forced to eat with hogs in the same space, and of people being so starved they caught and ate mice. A bishop in prison, them, in prison there described his bedding as a little pad of straw with a rotten covering. It's really sad. <laughs> Prison conditions. The conditions at Fleet were very dirty. At one point, raw sewage from the prison was choking the portion of the Fleet River that ran by the prison. Prisoners became sick and authorities were forced to investigate. Fleet Prison was finally demolished in 1846. Fardington Street runs over the site where the Fleet once was. No trace remains of the prison that stood for nearly 700 years. Debtors' prisons. If a business or person lends you money in today's world you don't pay it back and you don't pay it back on time that person can take you to court he can take some of the wages you earn or he can make it hard for you to borrow money in the future but none of these punishments are as bad as being thrown in prison and that's exactly what would happen to you until the early 19th century if you borrowed money and didn't pay it back in england and other countries your creditor the person to whom you owe money could order you to be sent to prison and there you would stay your sentences as short as a few days or as long as many years debtors prisons were the warden were a for-profit business. If you had money, you could pay the warden, the head jailer, for better food and for your own room. Of course, the problem with debtors' prisons, many scholars pointed out, was this. How could a debtor repay his debt if he was imprisoned and could not work to otherwise get money to pay back his debts? The Tower of London. The Tower of London is not only a tower, but a massive complex of buildings and grounds. Begun by William the Conqueror in 1070s as a fortress, the original tower was completed in 1100 and the rest of the compound by 1350. It had been used by England's monarchs as a royal residence, a storage center for valuable papers, and an area for victory parties. It was not until the 17th century rule of Henry the eighth that the tower became a prison behind the bars also known as her majesty's royal palace and fortress located in london england along the thames river operational 1100 to 1952 number of prisoners more than 8,000 over the centuries <laughs> notable inmates elizabeth the first queen of england why did they put her in prison <laughs> 
Anne Boleyn, second wife of Henry VIII, Thomas Cromwell, chief minister of Henry VIII, Sir Walter Raleigh, explorer, writer, oh my god, he was just sent to jail all the time, Guy Fox, planned as the gunpowder pilot plot. Not your average criminals. This was no place for common criminals. It was instead reserved for elite prisoners, such as wealthy nobles and anyone who threatened the power of the throne. The politician Sir Thomas More, as well as the English prince Edward V, not to mention two of Henry VIII's own wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, were executed at the tower. It was also common for people whose religious beliefs challenged those of the monarch to be sent to the tower. Even Elizabeth I was sent there by her own half-sister, Queen Mary. That explains it. In 1554, before she became queen four years later, she too would send political and religious rebels to the tower during her long reign as queen. She was sent to the tower. <laughs> And was like, yeah, that's a good place for other people to go. Life in the Tower. Living out the rest of your days at the Tower waiting to be executed must have been horrible. But daily life in the Tower wasn't all bad. Accommodations were spacious, and noble prisoners entertained family, friends and family with food and drink served by their own staff. Sir Walter Raleigh brought his family with him to the Tower and received treatment from his own doctors there. King John of France was even permitted to travel the country while technically a prisoner in the Tower. At one point, he gave a feast that included 12 chickens and dozens of bottles of wine. Executions. Even though some prisoners were held in nice accommodations, the tower was also a site of gruesome torture and execution. Many prisoners would be headed right in the tower's courtyard, executions that were public events for anyone who wanted to attend. Perhaps the most famous person beheaded at the tower was Anne Boleyn, who in 1536 was convicted of crimes against her husband, the king. Due to Anne's royal status, Henry VIII brought in an expert executioner from France to do the job. Hey, at least he loved her enough <laughs> to get a proper, proper guy. Ghosts in the Tower of London. In 1610, Arabella Stewart, a descendant of Henry VII, was imprisoned in the Queen's house, a building on the grounds of the Tower of London. She married without permission of the king, which was not allowed in those days. When King James discovered her marriage, he ordered her to be imprisoned in the tower. Arabella died in the tower in 1915. The Queen's house is now a residence, and guests who have stayed in Arabella's room have woken in the night to feel the tight grip of someone's hands on their throat. But no one is ever there, except perhaps the ghost of Arabella. Another story tells of a bear that report. <laughs> Sorry. It's not funny. It's a serious ghost bear. Has haunted the Martin Tower where the crown jewels are displayed today. Two bears have lived in, at the Tower of London in the past. A polar bear that was given as a gift to Henry III from the King of Norway in 1251 and a grizzly bear from North America given by the Hudson Bay Company to George III in 1811. A ghostly bear, perhaps the ghost of one of these bears, supposedly appeared many years ago in the tower. Legend has it that it shocked a guard so, so badly the man died from fright. That is so... Sorry, that's not... A man... A man died. 